Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 22nd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The diary I wrote today is about a feature that I see being used more and more in recent years and that feature is the GeoFeed attribute in Whois data. Essentially what this is about is that if you're looking at the Whois data for a particular network, you will see a URL, the GeoFeed URL. This URL has a simple comma delimited uh, file that uh, will indicate which net block is located at what location. There are a couple different fields here that are available. It starts with the country, then a region, like that would be a state in the United States, can then go down to a city and even a postal code, even though these fields are then optional and I don't see the postal code being used that terribly much. But the point here is that this feature provides more granularity than you usually get from who is who is usually just lists the headquarter address of the particular cloud provider or ISP and then it also allows the ISP to more easily keep that data up to date. Interesting approach and if you are interested in doing some geolocation on your own, uh, this may be a nice thing uh, to use. There's also a GitHub repo I have a link for in the diary that has a GeoFeed finder, a Node.js script that uh, can go out and collect all of uh, these uh, GeoFeed files and ran it earlier, uh, ran pretty well, uh, not I'm not sure how complete it is yet. Anyway, uh, so uh, that's just uh, if you're trying to do a little bit geolocation on IP addresses. And then today we also got updates for iOS and iPadOS from Apple, also for Vision OS. There are security updates that are being addressed with these uh, patches, but uh, Apple has not released any details yet. This is very common. We probably will see in the next couple of days the respective Mac OS, Watch OS, based the other uh, operating systems being updated. And once all the updates are released, Apple will then typically also tell us what the security content of all these updates is. And talking about Apple, there is also a new paper out showing how Apple CPUs are vulnerable to a particular memory prefetch vulnerability that allows the extraction of cryptographic keys from RSA, Crystal Skyper and the Lithium algorithms. The problem as so often is that uh, the CPU will prefetch data and then not properly isolate that data from other processes. So that way it could be read or at least conclusions could be drawn about the data as it's sitting in this cache. This is sort of uh, what this paper is about and they also have uh, tools implementing this particular attack. And if you are a GitHub Advanced Security customer, you will have access to what GitHub calls the public beta for its code scanning autofix. This is an artificial intelligence functionality that's sort of part of Copilot. Uh, Copilot, of course, is the assistant for developers that will automatically then recognize potential vulnerabilities and suggest fixes. The name of the tool is Autofix, but the fixes are not applied automatically. You do have to actually accept the fixes. I have to see if I can play with this and experiment a little bit with it. I did experiment a while ago and I wrote about uh, sort of the code security of code created with GitHub's Copilot. It was not great, but at least better than what you usually get uh, from Stack Overflow, which of course doesn't really mean that much. So we'll see if uh, this at least makes better, safer suggestions in addition to fixing flaws in existing code. And yes, we can let this week go with a visit to two old favorites. One is Fortinet. The 40 client EMS SQL injection vulnerability now has 
uh, proof of concept exploit available. This comes thanks to Horizon 3, who pre-announced that they will make this available late last week when the patch was originally released. This SQL injection vulnerability, as is demonstrated in the write-up, can then lead to actually a full remote code execution via the good old XP underscore command shell functionality. And of course, we have to mention Ivanti, two more vulnerabilities here. One remote code execution vulnerability in standalone Sentry, and a second vulnerability in the IT service management software Neurons. And as I mentioned so often, many of the vulnerabilities that I'm talking about and several vulnerabilities I talked about here today are web application vulnerabilities. I am teaching my securing web application class, SEC 522, next week in Orlando, in second week of April in London, and then in May in San Diego. May San Diego will be just following RSA, so you can take RSA and then on the last day skip out and head to San Diego for the class. Links can be found in the show notes page on the isc.sans.edu website. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.